everyone, welcome to Edifying Moments. So happy to see everybody today. Uh, we're going to get into the word for better forever. Uh, let me go ahead and pray first. Uh, I don't have to bring up John 3.16, do I? <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and pray first. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your love. I thank you, Lord, for every married individual that is listening to us. I thank you, Lord, that we're going to say something that's going to bring them revelation, bring them thank to a new Lord. level in their marriage. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. A uh, little product placement there. See my uh, nice hat right there? I think I'll go ahead and put that on. Looks real good. And uh, on the 29th, we're having a... Glow Global function. Fashion. Yeah, we're going to yes, be glowing glow it up. Glow fellowship, amen. Glorious, loving, amen. overcoming women. women. And uh, my wife looks nice in her glow gear. Yes. Uh, the, the Lord is good. As you can see uh, on the lower third, you have some information. You, you need to go ahead and register. Amen. Uh, it's filling up. The ladies know how to do it. Amen. Because my wife awesome is going to be doing her, her giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> so thank God for that. Uh, I'm just like my father. I just love to bless my people. Amen. Yes. Uh, tonight, we're going to uh, continue on uh, for better forever. And the way that we was going at this is the non-traditional way of, uh, of going ahead and looking at the scriptures as it pertained to uh, just being a Christian. Yes. Because I am thoroughly convinced that if we just be a Christian in our marriage relationship, it will be amazing. And we've been looking at various scriptures as Christians, the way that we, sh we should behave ourselves. Uh, my wife is going to take a look at a few of them from Proverbs. I want to start in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Uh, going with that, let me read it to you. Uh, and of course, you can go ahead and get that. This is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and verse 2. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God, as dear children. So that's the first thing. Follow God as dear children, not as grown-ups, as a dear child. Now that I'm born again, now that I'm in the kingdom, now that I'm in the family, I'm going to do what he does. I'm not going to follow him like you follow a wheelbarrow. I'm going to follow him like a child that's following his or her parent. Verse 2, and walk in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling Savior. So you see, if we just do what the Word says, uh, to walk in love in our marriage relationship, to give, one, to give ourselves for our spouse, we won't have the difficulty that we have. God has already laid things out for us in his Word. Uh, so tonight we're going to focus in on our words, our tongue the way that we communicate, the way that we talk to each other. Amen. So we're going to focus and home in on that. Uh, anything before you want to go to Proverbs or you want to jump right into it? Go ahead. All right. Let's go ahead and we're going to start uh, with, I think, I think James 119 would be a good starting point for Amen. us. James 119. James 119. And it says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Let me go again. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. Now, he's telling you how to go about living a Non upset life. The first thing he said, won't you just listen? A lot of times we we jump off the handle, and if we just be quiet and just listen to what the other one is saying, we will get a full understanding of what's going on and ask questions. Uh, the second part of it, he said, look, slow to speak, swift to hear. Let brethren, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. Don't look for the opportunity to go ahead and talk. Just listen out, hear out. As we say in our household, uh, 
Listen to the whole presentation. presentation. Don't interrupt. Just listen to the whole presentation. Then after the presentation, then we're only going to talk about your presentation. Amen. We're going <clears throat> to have my opportunity to talk about my presentation after. But right now, I need to be listening to what you say. I need to understand what it is you say. And I'm going to ask all my questions based upon what you're talking about. All right. Amen. And just in that, if you if you just be quick quick to hear, <clears throat> um, concentrating on the hearing part, we we want to we want to talk before we hear, like he said. But if you just take the time to listen, sometimes you don't even have to say anything. You can respond and say, "I agree." If we are if we are if we would hear a person out, no matter if we're at work, no matter if we're at home with the spouse, no matter sometimes even with the kids. But if you just hear your spouse out sometimes, you don't even have to say, you don't even have to go to the speaking part because sometimes if you listen, the answers will come out in the presentation. Um, a lot of times he said, hear my whole pre presentation because when he first started out, it'd be like, oh, I don't want to do that. But I didn't hear the whole presentation. So you have to listen to the whole presentation when it, when it comes to a husband and wife. They may be presenting something to you that they may want to take care of. They may want to do some things. They may want to go out and buy some things. And maybe they got this plan, but he started out is, started out, I want to go out and do this, but did not give you the process of what he's going to do. And you didn't got all discombobulated for no reason when the plan is going to be within the process of him communicating or she communicating to you. So understanding that listening is the key. Quick to hear. Let me hear first. When I, I'm, I'm, I'm concentrating now on hearing the Father, uh, paying attention to the things that he's saying to me. So if we even take this um, as it relates to God himself, um, before we even begin to talk about things, let's begin to listen to what he's telling us, even through the word. Ask the Father to give us uh, ears to hear and, and an eye or a soul and a heart to understand. That the eyes of our understanding will begin to be enlightened. But key points, key points is that I want to focus on Key points are, I want to focus on uh, listening, listening to my spouse, hear what he has to say to me before I even speak about anything. And it tells us to be slow to anger. Um, if, you, if you get in the book of Proverbs, <laughs> Proverbs will break it down to you about being anger, angry. Um, I want to read Proverbs 29 and 11. Um... Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29 and 11. I got you in the, uh, in the King James. Um, it says, and then while, while I'm reading it out of the King James, you can get it in probably what? Well, let's see what this translation says. All right. Now, in the King James, it says, a fool utter all his mind. Mm. But a wise man, keep it it in till afterwards. Mm. So it's all about just, just, just being quiet. Just, 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 just listen to the fool. <laughs> and then after you listen to the fool, then you know where you have to go after that. So it's very important. And while she's looking at it, let me give you a scenario. Uh, the wife come home with a brand new Mercedes Benz. Ha! She very drives soon. up. Uh, <laughs> the husband walks outside and the wife hadn't done any. All she did was get out the car and smile and say, you like this? And he goes ballistic. We can't afford no car. What are you doing? And all she's explaining is that uh, your mother bought a new car and she wanted me to test drive it. Wow. See, so often we flow off, we flow, fly off the handle. But if you be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to rap. So you understand? Yes. So it's okay uh, if you drive that Mercedes, okay? Amen. Amen. Very right. soon. 
Um, saying that. You got nothing I have to two translations. One of them: a fool gives full, a full vent to his anger, but a wise man keep himself under control. Now, learning to keep yourself under control, he's not just talking to men. He's talking to women as, as well. We need to learn how to keep ourselves under control because we are we we can do some venting, ladies. You know, we love to vent. We love to talk about how they didn't do this and didn't do that, but we have to learn. How, we have to learn how to keep that in, hear the whole presentation, and learn to keep ourselves under control. We don't have to get all fly off at the handle. I mean, we can fly off at the handle for some for some things that just don't, doesn't really matter. You know, as a as a wife, I have to keep my temperament a certain way when I'm dealing with my, with my husband. Because uh, he, he doesn't like a, me to be loud, you know? And so my temperament, even he's, he's to this point, even if, you know, we're, I'm downstairs, he's upstairs, and I'll say, Bernard, he's like, come upstairs and call me. You know, the temperament of screaming and being out of control about anything, but, if you always venting and, and it's, it's, the Bible is calling you a fool because you always going off. You know, you get at, I, I've met individuals that they just get mad at everything. I mean, if, 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 the, if the light came on too early, if he walked outside and the mail was put in the wrong spot, they got something to complain about that. I mean, venting about everything, that's a fool. Uh, but a wise man, a wise woman, can keep herself or himself under control. And that's what we want to do. We want to learn to keep ourselves under control, no matter what we're going through, no matter what situation is presented in our marriage. Some things can be presented in the marriage. I, I could have uh, came home and did something that we discussed that we weren't going to do. I could have spent too much money. You know, and we, we discussed we weren't going to do that. But uh, hear the whole presentation. Don't get all discombobulated. Don't get all upset. Uh, keep things under control and present your presentation properly and be able to discuss things. Everything is up for discussion, not an argument. You know, you don't have to argue over everything that you do. Uh, another one I want to read since we're talking about this, is uh, Proverbs 15, 1. Proverbs 15, 1. All right. I will you got read it out the King James, and you can get it out of wherever you want to get it. There we go. A soft answer, turn yes. away wrath. Yes. But grievous words stir up anger. Mm. So sometimes if you just turn around and say, I understand, versus, uh, you know, you, you, well, who are you talking to like that? Why are you talking to me like that? Well, what, what you doing that for? You know, that's unnecessary. You don't have, well, 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 well why you did that? You know, or, or watch the way you talk to me. That's unnecessary. You know, uh, mine says a gentle uh, answer turns away wrath, but harsh words cause quarrel. Quarrels. So if I give you harsh words for harsh words, all we're going to do is argue. So my soft return to you will calm you down. That will begin to calm the other person down and say, well, well, listen, I'm, I'm not, I'm, maybe I'm misunderstanding what you're trying to communicate to me. But you, just because another, another person is coming in there voicing, uh, they loud voice does not mean that you can you have to return it. You give a soft answer, and then that soft answer will come back to you. Um, learn to speak uh, and and lower your tone when you're talking to one another. One of the things you know, my husband has a loud voice, so there's times when he I mean he's talking and I and I'll tell him when he comes in I'll just go lower your voice, not not being mean, not being upset, but it's coming at me too loud. So I just say. Lower it down so I can really hear what you're saying. And sometimes you can't even hear a person. You can't even hear when they come at you all kind of ways. So learn to speak to your, your spouse respectfully. That's one of the things that we want to make sure we're doing. 
Amen. Amen. Uh, I wanted to go ahead and take a look at uh, John 15. Uh, before that, I want to go to Thessalonians. Let me go to First Thess. First Thessalonians. First Thess 4:11. In a marriage relationship, we're talking about your words, the way that you speak, uh, what to do, click to hear. But also, there is a point in which uh, I like the way they say it here. <coughs> 411, it says this. Uh, and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands. As we commanded you, let me read it again for you, and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to do your own work or your work with your own hands as we commanded you. Now, I don't know about you, but it sounds like he's saying, shut up, mind your business, do your work. <laughs> And so if you can understand the just of that as married couples, that's what we do. We, we don't talk about other, other people. We watch our words. We mind our business. And we work on our own relationship. Yes. The problem with so many people is they talk too much about other folks, mm -hmm. and they're not taking care of their own business. Amen. So I'm, this, I'm not telling you. First Thessalonians 4.11 is telling you, shut up. Mind your own business. Work on your own marriage. Mm. And so when you begin to do that, then God can do some things for you. But as long as you're in a busybody in other people's affairs, that's not cool. So, again, shut up, mind your business, do your own work, work on your own marriage. Mm -hmm. See, I'm a firm believer that if we just do the work, our marriage would be amazing. I don't have time to talk about anybody else's marriage because I'm busy working on mine. I mean, when we get done talking with the things that we have to talk about, finances, ministry, children, grandchildren, school that's coming up, because we are continual, you know, our education has to continue at all times. Amen. We got to enroll. So we got all of these things going on. We don't have time to be, you know, lollygagging about your marriage. You know, I'm glad that you're having a, a great time. Your marriage is good. But at the end of the day, we got to work on our own. So take my advice. Work on your own marriage. Amen. Right. Amen. And just learning, uh, a lot of times um, we have relationships. Uh, girls may have relationships with other women. Guys have relationships with other guys, uh, friends, meaning that they're going to talk about their marriage with their friend. Or uh, things are not going so well. And <clears throat> I'm going to tell you, it's, it's, like, it's like my husband when he's talking to the teenagers. Uh, you get your advice from a 16-year-old. So you got a 16-year-old advice. And so you think you know everything because your 16-year-old friend told you everything. You didn't learn nothing because that person only got 16 years on the earth. Same way with a marriage. You confide in individuals that have one-year marriage, or two-year marriage, or barely getting along marriage, and you confide and you even tell them in things about your marriage that you shouldn't even do because they're going to give you an answer based on what they have experienced, not based on God's word. If it doesn't line up with God's word, I don't want to hear it anyway. But well, you have to learn to, to not even confide in individuals because what happens you tell me about your husband, he's doing this at home. He do, he don't doing this. And then I get home and I, I begin to talk to my husband in some kind of way because I'm taking out with you and put all that garbage on the inside of me. I didn't heard everything that you said. So then my husband says something off the wall and I was like, well, what you mean? You know, so you have to learn that you don't tell everything to your friend, you know, about your, your spouse. You keep what belongs to you and your spouse. That's between you and your spouse. Uh, mm -hmm. All of their, their shortcomings, all the things, their, their infirmities, anything that's going on in your house, you learn to mind your own business. Keep that thing going on in your house. And you respect, you honor, you cover your husband, your wife, you do the same. Don't talk about your wife to your friend. 
Um, that is the worst thing in the world that you can do because every time your friend sees your wife or your wife, every time the wife sees the husband of that friend, they, re they can re recollect mm -hmm. everything that you said to them. And so they're looking out at them sideways. You don't want to put that taste in another person's mouth because at the end of the day, you're going to forgive your husband or your wife and you're not going to look at them like that anymore. But that friend that you said it, they're going to remember those thoughts. They're going to remember those words that you shared. And that's not good. So we want to make sure that we cover our spouses and not share information with individuals concerning our spouses. That goes back to being slow to speak. Watch what comes out of your mouth. Um, we Go ahead. And can you imagine how potentially detrimental that could be because look once you start to tell then what happens he's going to tell somebody else or yeah. she's going to tell somebody else yeah and then all of these people are going to be looking at your spouse and you the one that gave them the seed or the poison to do that yes. so please mind you but keep everything in house that's, that's up to y'all yes yeah yeah amen Next. i want to go ahead to uh to our scripture we have some questions Yes. Uh, I'll try to get to a few of them. Yes. Uh, but this one right here is where we need to be. This is John 15 and 3. Oh, yeah. We're talking about this one here. This is this is, this is is the one I wanted to get to. I don't care if we would have had to stay here another 45 minutes. <laughs> I had to get this one. Yes. Uh, 15 and 3 says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Amen. I want you to think about what this oh. said. Jesus is talking. He said, look. You cling to the word which I have spoken to you. We're supposed to follow Christ. We love our wife and, and we love each other. So we're going to mirror him. So I want you to think about this. See, I wash my wife with my words. Mm. She washed me with her words. Amen. So her words are critical. Amen. Now, most of the time what people do, they dirty one another up with yes. the words. So I want you today to make a decision that I am going to wash my spouse with my words. Yes. I don't care how, if, if that person is trying to dirty me up. I refuse to be dirty. But you know what? I'm going to keep him washed. Mm. I'm going to keep talking about I'm going to keep saying good things about him. <laughs> I'm going to wash you, dude, with my words. I'm going to wash you, lady, with my words. I got you. Amen. Uh, one of the things that anybody that, that, that meet me, uh, I have rave reviews. Uh, Aunt Jessie. Hey, Aunt Jesse, how you doing? <laughs> uh, that is uh, somebody that follows the ministry. And one of the things that she says is how I'm always saying good things about my wife. Uh, I'm always saying good things about my wife because I am a Christian. And I understand that my words produce. So I'm going to say what I want. I'm not going to say what I have unless what I have is what I want. See, I've been practicing the word. I've been living the word. This is my girl. This is my wife. My, 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 I have a lot of names for my wife, and all of them are good names. Uh, <laughs> it, and I'll, without going too, too far, there was a period of time in which, hey, she didn't like what she was wearing. She didn't like the way she was looking. So I would all say, come here, little one. Come here, little one. I would call her little one because everything is designed to help her. Wherever she was struggling, I would always use my words to help her out of that struggle, not continue to beat her down because she's my wife. So I'm washing her with my words. All of my words that I'm saying, they're designed to lift her up, to edify her. Mm -hmm. I'm washing them. And that's what he said. Look, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now she is clean by the word that I have spoken to her. P.A., I, I meet people and I always tell her, you met, oh yeah, I'm married to the greatest woman in the whole wide world. My wife, Amen. she is outstanding. Absolutely. I, and, and, you know, sometimes I go a little overboard. I'll, I'll start quoting poets, you know, being from New Orleans. I said, look, my wife, I got to quote one of the greatest poets in the whole wide world from New Orleans. Every time I think about it, she made me go, uh, na, 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> words my words to, to, to get her up Amen. always that if I have nothing but good things to say about her now is she perfect no but I'm not either so I am on I am always going to be careful of my words I'm always I'm never going to call her anything 
the harshest thing I'm going to call her, Rhonda. She know that's business. <laughs> but other than that, that's it. I'm washing her with my words Amen. all the time. So please, wash your spouse with your words. Amen. Amen. And, and, and find some humor in it. You know, uh, Pastor and I, you know, we've, we've watched movies throughout the time. And, and one of the things, if, if I feel that he's not doing something that I don't like or, or not doing it right, I go to quoting Denzel Washington on him. You don't get it right. I'm taking over, Yokes. You know, and we, he just laughs. But we, ha we find some humor in our relationship. And he's not uh, thinking that I'm trying to run his life. Uh, he just finds some humor. And he said, well, I got to get my stuff together. You know, so learn to uh, compliment one another the best way you can. Find the best in each other the best way you know how. Even when they're not doing their best because there are going to be times where you're not going to be the best. There are times when, when we're not at our best. But even when we're not at our best, we still find a way to compliment each other. Even when it, it can be, uh, the moment can be rushed. There's times in, when he's had to say, okay, I need you to do this at this time. And I was like, I had to learn that my husband loves me no matter what, what he's, how he's t saying or conveying something to me. He said, no matter how I'm saying anything at that particular time, especially when we're in a rush, you got to know that you know that I'm crazy about you. And so when you, when you give your wife that, uh, that feeling that, that, that my eyes are for you only and I am crazy about you, you don't even, when there, when there are times when it seems like something may come out a little harsh, you, you don't even pay any attention because it's not coming toward you. You, you know, I've had to ask him sometimes, oh, I don't even say anything. I say, well, maybe he had a rough day at work. You know, all, don't quick to say, oh, you're being mean to me. Well, maybe things just didn't work out for him, whatever he was doing. So let me just be quiet a while, and eventually he'll come around. You know, learn to listen and know your husband. If things are not normal, there's a reason things are not normal. If he's talking a different way, there's a reason. Now, we talked about words. You know, I talked about this last week. We want to make sure that we're always speaking uh, positive, good words to our spouses. We should never use words that are not pleasant to our spouse. Um, never, you know, never use. Uh, I, and I've heard where, where husbands come in and they, they swearing or they using profanity or the wife. That shouldn't be. And I'm going to tell you something, ladies. You can be as pretty as you want to be. And you let them ugly words come out your mouth. You look just like them words coming out your mouth. So have truth about yourself. If you want the man to treat you some way, but you allow it, you just letting anything come out the side of your mouth, you, you are asking for him to talk to you any kind of way. So control the way you carry yourself and what comes out of your mouth, and then your husband will say, well, she expects better to come from me. So I, I demanded respect from my husband when I met him. He demanded respect from me. That's something that we just did not tolerate and will never tolerate. Uh, we talking uh, using profanity toward one another. I don't find it cute. I don't find it today's uh, world or, or whatever. That is not acceptable in our house. And you need to make sure that it's not acceptable in yours because what you're saying to yourself is, oh, just, just, it's on me. Just talk to me any kind of way. No, I am royal. I am precious. God made me in his image. I am a princess. I'm a queen. I expect to be treated royal. And so my husband is going to treat me like a queen because I demanded that respect. And so when you treat yourself or you carry yourself that way, he's going to do the same to you. And you respect and honor him as being the king of your house. He should feel like the king of his castle. No one... Uh, should ever be able to come in your home and have your husband feel less. You know, like sometimes you, you can have somebody come in your home and just kind of take over. No, your husband is the king of his castle, and everything should be respected and honor coming from that man in that household. And you need to learn how to respect and honor him above anybody else that comes through that home. And that's, that's still putting in slow to speak, listening to his heart, 
finding out the things that he desires, his, he loves, and being able to offer and give that to him. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have three questions. I'll go ahead and, and try to tackle them as best as I possibly can. Uh, thank God uh, that we uh, that we depend upon the Holy Ghost, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, the first question, I went ahead and sent them to you, but I'll okay. go ahead through it. Uh, the first one, and I'll condense it, we have an individual that was involved in a relationship. And in this relationship, uh, one of the, uh, the mates, one of the spouses, just decided to do anything that they wanted to do, make poor decisions, bad decisions. And so ultimately, the relationship, that relationship ended in divorce. Now, her question or his question is, does the assignment that both of them share, is that null and void? Well, you have to understand. Remember what we said? God has an assignment for you as an individual. So your assignment, you are still valuable. So you can still move on, and then God will send you somebody else. If that's your desire. Uh, while I'm there, and I'm going to pick it back on the second question, but uh, what happens is, so let me, let me answer your question. No, your assignment in God is never null and void. Mm -mm. You pick it up and you go about your business. Mm -hmm. Hey, I know, and what, this is what I said, that if we handle ourselves like the word says, well, then our marriage will be amazing. But I, I'm not, I, I am not naive. I'm not oblivious to the fact that some people are just not going to do right. Mm -hmm. They're going to just do wrong because they want to. And sometimes you have to part ways. But when you do, the hardest thing in the world is to make certain that when you part ways, you leave the baggage behind you. Amen. Don't bring the baggage with you. So now you get with the Lord and you make certain that you're walking. And don't rush into another relationship. Don't do that. Hmm. Don't do that because if you, there has to be a period of, or a process in which you have to get rid of the, the, the old way of thinking. You have to just, just sink yourself in the Lord. Lord, uh, thank you for receiving me. I need your knowledge, your understanding. And so now, let me talk about the waiting process. Because a lot of times, it, once you end the relationship, because you're so used to being in one, you want to just jump into another. No. What you're going to do is you're going to, Sink yourself deep into the word. You're going to sink yourself deep into a relationship with God. And then from there, you're going to change your circle. You're going to change your circle. You're going to get with a leader, a pastor, or somebody, and just start setting up times so that you can communicate that, so that you're not all alone. Because that's what the enemy will do. He'll make you think that you're the only one going through this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're never going to find nobody else. Mm -hmm. You're... That's a lot. So what you're going to do while you're waiting for God to send you somebody, uh, just get busy. Get busy doing his work. I mean, like we have people here that life construction. They got their soul in it. Come on. You learn what God wants you to do and go ahead and get out there. Start winning them to the Lord. And you never know. You might lead your spouse to the Lord. So just get busy doing what he says to do. And, and don't worry about everything else. Uh, anything before this um, last one? Yes. Um, one of, in relationships, the biggest challenge is we forget that God is a forgiving God. And when true repentance takes place, God wipes that thing clean. Um, we have one of the biggest examples in the word of God, um, David himself. Uh, David did some horrific things just to get another man's husband. Then what, had the what, wife what? did get an excuse me, I don't want to say that. Get another man's wife. Then had, then had him killed. Then impregnated her. Then the baby died. Then God allowed him to marry the, the girl. So one of the things David did, and we never talk about it, is David truly repented before the Father. Um, we, we hold that thing in our hearts. We think that the other person, sometimes that other person moves on and remarry and get their lives together, but we think they should be held accountable for that sin that they did to that other spouse forever and ever and ever and ever. You know, you can repent 
and move on and not get back with another person. And we, we have to understand when repentance takes place, we have to be able to release and walk in forgiveness. But we hold on to that thing, and we don't understand the true uh, meaning of what Christ died for. He died for our sins, that we are to be forgiven, but we have to learn to forgive as well. And we hold up thinking that we're supposed to be attached to a person that had no respect for us. If that person couldn't honor and respect us, move on. If they, and hold, you hold on to an individual thinking that that was your assignment, and maybe it wasn't your assignment in the first place. Maybe you weren't supposed to be together in the first place. But you have to seek the Father and say, Lord, what is your will for my life? And like he said, don't rush him to go get with someone else, but ask the Father, if you're a female, that man is going to find you if he loves God. If you're a male, God will allow you to find the perfect lady to you that's going to love God. If you're searching and looking for men or women that don't love God, you're wasting your time anyway. But learning to, uh, to walk in forgiveness when you've been hurt, when you can re truly release, God can truly restore. But he will not restore you to a place where you need to be restored if you have not released. A lot of times we, we even, we, we get back with the husband or we, we take a husband back that, that have uh, our wife or even a wife that has uh, committed uh, adultery. We get back with the spouse. But in the back of our mind, we still don't trust them. We still bring it up after every opportunity we get. So you really truly haven't forgiven. And so what happens sometimes? The spouse usually go right back to living that lifestyle again because you don't trust me anyway. You, 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 you blaming me anyway. You, you say I'm doing it anyway, so I may as well be guilty of it. And they never have an opportunity to come to the Father open and, and naked before the Father because you continue to put them down, continue to give them condemnation. They don't have time to be convicted because they're living in condemnation all the time. But if you truly f learn to forgive and release, I'm not saying that you, because that, that wound, it, it's going to be there for a while. And that husband or that spouse has to learn how to build trust again. But when you release a person, you have to release them and ask the Father. Even when you, there's a scripture that says, Lord, help my unbelief. I use that scripture for anything, any problem that I may be having. So any challenge you may be having, even when it comes to not even believing your spouse is telling the truth, and they really are telling the truth. You have to ask the Father and the Holy Spirit to help you deal with that thing, not take it out on the spouse. You know, you have to really, truly forgive. And when you do that, God can really, truly restore. And we want to be restored in our marriages. Or we want to re be restored in a relationship. Just because you be restored, that don't mean you'll get the same thing. Uh, let's look at Job. Job lost everything. Children, all of his material, pride, everything. He lost it all. But God restored him. Did he give him the same children that he had? Did he raise them same children back up from the dead? No. He gave him new children, new stuff. Matter of fact, better stuff than what he had before. So I take that. If the spouse has moved on, God will send you much, much better. If you have truly released and been able to walk in love and able to walk in forgiveness, getting that bitterness out of your heart is the best thing that you can do so that God can give you, your, can, you can walk in your true assignment, what God has called you to do. Uh, the next question, uh, mm. I think we're going to go ahead and take this last one. Let's go ahead uh, and ask them. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, this one here deals with uh, porn, pornography. Uh, this, uh, the question is, let me go ahead and make Please certain. Find that pornography is wrong. Yeah. Please. I'll read the question. It says, please explain why pornography is wrong, especially in a Christian marriage, and defiles the marriage and should not be accepted. It's acceptable. So. All right. We'll start with Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Uh, this is the first thing. I want to read this 
and uh, because uh, pornography affects your soul. Mm -hmm. it, it, it gives you a, a, uh, a perverted image. Mm, uh, it says this, yes. finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, if there be any praise, if there be any good report, if there be any praise, or, or I'm, I'm going to have to read out of mine. Uh, let me read it all over again. I'll go with mine. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and there be any praise, think on these things. Now, how can this verse here allow you to watch other people engaging in sex. Hmm. Come on. So I can tell from the question that one is asking about the other. Mm -hmm. And so, look, I don't have to sit in and tell you that uh, porn is wrong uh, because of the simple fact. There we go. I don't have to tell you that. You already know it is. Uh, but if that's what the individual wants, that's what the because she's talking about. It. Sometimes you just have to make a decision. Yeah, you have to make a choice, because in that relationship, then he's going to satisfy or gratify himself with what he watch on his device. Yeah. Uh, in person, shut that down. Shut Ask that God down. for forgiveness, and whatever it is that you have to do, you need to cut that off, because your mind, your soul is being damaged. Mm -hmm. Every time you watch that, you understand? So, yes, it's wrong because it affects your soul. It, it messes everything up on the inside. Then. And, hey, he said, whatsoever thing. And I believe it's in Proverbs that tells us to have eyes for your own wife, that your, that your wife breasts should satisfy you and your wife only, not nobody else's. Um, and you are, and you are imagining when you're with your own spouse, you're imagining you being with somebody else. The Bible talks about having lust for something else. You don't want to be lusting for somebody else and you with your own spouse. You don't want to be looking at somebody else and imagining you with somebody else. That's, that's not golly. That's not what God intended for a marriage. Uh, we, we, if you, if you, I tell every couple, when you read the, uh, Song of Solomon, it tells you all of how his wife should satisfy him. Uh, and so we have to learn that this, this is the only person for you. And if you're uh, looking at porn, porn has ruined a lot of marriages. Oh, my gosh. Husbands. Because I'm going to tell you, it starts off with watching it on TV. Before you know it. You're watching it on a computer. And then before you know it, you are looking for that woman that you saw on the porn movie. You're looking for that woman outside in the street because your wife, you know, maybe that wife have had three, four babies. She's not looking the way she was looking before. And so you are getting your gratification out of something you saw on a movie. And then you get with this poisonous snake out there that's going to come in there and ruin your whole household. Because you're trying to get with something because it's all an imagination thing. Or you saw it on television. So you want to bring this into your household. And that's why now today, in today we have couples. We got uh, not couples anymore. We got what, threesomes and fulsomes and fivesomes, whatever they call it. And you are ruining what God intended for the marriage. It's for a husband and a wife. And... All your creativity should be between the two of you. And, and if, if, if you begin to be creative with yourself and not try to find somebody else, um, God will cause you to have everything that you need for that spouse. He will have you be able to satisfy your own spouse and, and, and that spouse be able to satisfy you. You get with the Lord. And what I love about God, he, he don't have nothing broken, nothing missing. He already knew. When he created Eve for Adam, he created her perfect. And so that's why I, I um, even with myself, you, you have all, the, you get these kids, your, your body get a little bit out of, out of whack. But 
you got to know, like my husband, uh, I think he was talking to a young man. And he said how much he, he was, the young man was explaining how much he loved his wife. He didn't care how, what, how much weight she weighed, didn't matter. If his wife had three babies for him, he said, I'd do anything for my wife. I just, my wife is amazing to me because she provided me with these three kids. You know, he just, he was just so in love with his spouse. He was just so tickled that she did this for him. He, he desired children and she did this. And he's like, I don't, my eyes will never run for another. And so, you know, taking care of yourself, being confident about yourself. A lot of times this porn and all these things is, is because we have so low self-esteem for ourselves. But if we begin to learn who we are from the inside, knowing that God has given us everything we need, he's equipped the husband and equipped the wife, everything she needs to satisfy her spouse and for him to satisfy you. You don't need to go look at anybody else. You know, and, and there's scripture after scripture that tells you about uh, lusting for something else that doesn't belong to you. It's just, it's, it's not the will of God for us. Matthew 5, 27. This is the that. last question. Matthew 5, 27. I kind of dealt with all three of them. Mm -hmm. the, other, the last one was waiting. But you can go ahead and get that one. Let me read this one right here, and then you can go back to that one. Matthew 5, 27. Matthew 5, 27. Waiting on that. Hallelujah. Mm, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> 527 says, uh, ye have heard that it was said by them of old times that uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her already in his heart or in his soul, in his mind. So that's the reason why it's not. Hey, stay away from adultery. That is your wife. You don't want nobody. Uh, I don't want to watch nobody else engaging in no activity. Forget that. I got my own wife. I'm going to start my own show. Glory <laughs> to God. And look, at the same time, I don't want you watching me either. <laughs> so I think we need to move on for that one. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to get us started. That's a whole other topic. Amen. All right. Amen. So the last question of the night, it says, what should those who are waiting on the Lord to send them their mate be doing in the meantime as far as preparing for marriage? You want to start? No, go. I, and, and I don't know if this is a female question or a male question, but I would, I would definitely start in Proverbs. There's a 31 Proverbs, 31 chapters in Proverbs. Read a chapter a day, husbands and wives, because it will prepare you for life, period. It gives you wisdom. It will prepare you for life, period. And then I would uh, begin to, uh, if you're preparing for marriage, I will begin to uh, kind of fellowship with, with, with people that are, that are leading into that direction. If you, you're telling me you're preparing for marriage, you may even be engaged. But you still hanging out. You still want to be hanging out with the fellas and, and looking for other women. You still want to be hanging out with the girls and looking for other men. And you engaged to be married. Or if he hasn't shown up, the Bible says that he will find you. Well, make sure when he finds you, ladies, that you are worth finding. You know, you got to make sure that you're the jewel that he's been looking for. Uh, same way with men. Make sure that you got all, if, you, if, if I'm, waiting on my husband to find me, I sure hope when he show up, he packing. He got, he's, he got something packing, meaning that he's, he's preparing for a family. He's, he's, he's got his things together, how he's going to take care of me. What are the things that he's looking for? You know, those are things that you do preparing. You know, make your list of some things that you desire when you are, are expecting this mate to show up. Um, but make sure that while you are making your own list, that you're worth catching. You know, you're not taking care of yourself. You're letting yourself go. You know, you're not reading your word. You don't love the Lord. You, you're hanging out with the wrong crowd. Um, learning to, to take care of yourself. 
and make sure that you are the catch that a man wants to catch or a woman, the guy that a guy, that a woman wants a guy to find. I mean, I want to make sure that the guy that, that, that was presented to me, that he's worth me being with. And you have to make sure that that's what you're preparing for. But always, always, the first husband, the first person you got to give yourself to is the father. When you can release as a woman and give yourself to the father, totally to the father, he will teach you how to present yourself to your spouse. And, and learning who you are as a woman, learning the details of, of all the things that you need to take care of as a female. Um, there's so much that I had to learn after becoming a wife. And I thank God that um, for the people that God allowed in my life at that time, I was young being married, didn't know anything about being a wife, it screwed it all up. But God saved my husband. And I'm telling you, when he saved my husband, that, that I, I like to say, that, that captured me. He, I mean, because he was able to connect me with the right people that taught me how to be the right wife, that taught me uh, how to present myself to my husband, how to respect, how to honor. And this word taught me. But also connecting with people that, that that desired a, a great relationship. I even remember one of my friends in the church. Uh, I was out with them one night. We were out um, working at the church. And, and one of the ladies in the church told me, she said, you know what? I, I'm divorced. You know, me, me and my husband not together. And one of the reasons I was spending too much time working at the church, uh, uh, doing too much. And she shared that with me. She said, you need to go home to your husband and take care of your family. You know, we got to know that our spouses are priority when we get married. So preparing for, there's so much that you have to learn as being a wife, as being a spouse, but getting in Proverbs will teach you a whole lot. It will call you fool. It will call you stupid. It will call you dumb. It will make you laugh. And I love to read it out of the living versions or the message uh, translation or the living Bible because it breaks it down and it really breaks it down enough to, to teach you that you ain't got it all together, that you have so much to learn. And if your heart is willing to learn, God can take you many places. When you, when you are a student, when you become a student, the teacher will appear. In every, even in a relationship, you have to be willing to learn. And because you're willing, you ask that question, you're willing to learn. Now the steps can begin. Matthew 6, 33, uh, that's where I will start. Yeah. If you're waiting, uh, you're waiting Seek. For, for your spouse. Seek. Uh, don't, don't just sit there <laughs> every day. Wait. You know, all right, five o'clock, Lord. All right, I'll be here waiting tomorrow. I got people do that too. It said, uh, but seek ye first mm. the kingdom of God and his righteousness, mm. and all these things shall be added unto you. So while you're waiting, just get busy doing the Father's will. Just give yourself to him, as she stated. Give yourself to him. Get busy working on your relationship with him. Now, as you're working on your He's relationship with him, that guy will find you. Oh, yes. It, you, you will become, it's say, whoa, how you doing? You know what? I've been coming up. I never really noticed you. What's your name? Uh, so just get busy doing the work of the Father. Amen. That's how you wait. You're not sitting there waiting on some dude or you, brother, you're not sitting there waiting on some lady. Your job is to seek the kingdom of God. May that be a priority. Yes. But you know what? Uh, there's a lot of people that once they found that guy, they found the man of their dream, and then three months later, they don't want what they got. So it's very important for you to work on you and your relationship with him. Amen. Allow the kingdom to be first and foremost. That way, if the kingdom is first and foremost, you know exactly what you're looking for. 
Then the Holy Spirit will work on you. You have that gift of discernment working on you all the time. When that guy come there looking like everything that is together, he's got his car, he's got his house, he's got all of these things. The Holy Spirit will say, nah, it's not the one. That's not the one. Look at all these pictures around here. <laughs> <laughs> this, this ain't the one. Because you will begin, you, you go into the relationship eyes open, mm -hmm. looking around. But look, the first thing, the most important thing, seek the kingdom. Seek the kingdom. Seek the kingdom. God. Understand who God is. Understand who you are. Then allow everything else. Because he said, seek ye first. He's not saying seek ye only. They got other things that you want, sure. But he said, look, allow the kingdom to be priority. Then as you allow the kingdom to be priority, that person will show up. Mm -hmm. All right. You'll show up. And then and, and one of the things we have to realize, he said earlier, you know, we, we get started. We all happy for three months, and then we realize. But during the whole three months, that person was showing you who they were. But you refused to recognize. You refused to listen. You refused to pay attention who they was trying to say, who they are. You know, uh, they don't, they, are you going to church tonight, babe? No, I ain't going. You dating them. You, 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 going, uh, you want to watch Pastor tonight? No, I won't watch it tonight. I'm, I'm going to check this game out. I'll check it with you tomorrow night. All those different signs, they were warning you way ahead of time, but you just ignoring the signs, and then come six months down the line, they don't want nothing to do with Christ. You better recognize what you're dealing with early, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's so imperative that we seek ye first the kingdom of God. Then all of the other things will come into play. If you do not seek the kingdom of God, you're going to have a tailspin. You're going to have some things to deal with. When people get married before Christ, you got a tough way to go until you meet the master. And then he can begin to teach you how to be a husband and a, and a wife. Uh, there's many people that has been married for many, many years. I listened to them. I watched them. I've observed them. And they're so miserable. But they tolerate it because they're with the kids. So they tolerate it because they, Christ is nowhere in their marriages. But it is their duty to stay married and be miserable. You have to put Christ as the center of your marriage if you expect. And then they want to ask us, what can we do to help you with your relationship? We look at each other, nothing. Yeah, time to go. Time to go. <laughs> you know, you don't want Jesus, you don't want us. Because everything is going to reflect Christ. That's why we're able to take these scriptures and, and not just go to the traditional marriage scriptures, but be able to go to any scripture in the Bible and pull, find ourselves or our relationship or our marriage in that scripture. We, we've, we've made something clear in our relationship. Uh, if he's asking me to do something, and I may, it may, and I may say, well, show me to it in the Word, because I, I don't remember reading that. You know, so chapter and verse. Chapter and verse. It will take you many, many places, but it will grow your life together. Um, submitting, even if you've been in a marriage, some of us, you may be online right now, you've been in a marriage, say, 15, 10, 15 years, and you, you know you're not happy because Christ is not the center of your marriage. Christ, God can restore that marriage, and he can have you have eyes for your wife like the very first day you fell in love with her or the very first day you fell in love with him. But you have to give the relationship over to Christ and submit your will to the Father's will, and he can do anything with your relationship. New beginnings can be in any relationship. What are you willing to submit to the Father? The problem is we don't want to submit it all to him. We want to just give him a little bit, but we, oh, oh, I don't want God to deal with this. Nope, he needs to deal with every aspect of your marriage. And your marriage can, can blossom into everything that you dream that it can possibly be. Now, uh, it's very important for you to understand what she stated. She said, the first thing you want to do is give yourself. Give yourself to Christ. Once you give yourself to Christ, then after that, then God can do some things with you and for you and through you. So question number three, you just heard question number one and two. You see, it ain't, you take your time. Because question number one, they were married, one spouse went to tripping, doing all kind of foolishness, 
uh, decide that they want to sleep with everybody else. And then in question number two, porn got involved. So question number three, what you're going to do is Take you're going to get with time. the father. <laughs> and you're going to allow the father to let you know who it is that you're going to marry. You understand? Just serve him. You know, that's get what I'm going to tell you. Get about the father's business. Get to winning souls. Mm -hmm. Get to sharing Christ. Get to doing those mm -hmm. things. All right? And you never know. Mm -hmm. One of the people that you lead to Christ, you may be at the altar saying, I do. Mm -hmm. All right? Any last words? All I want to say is that you can win if you choose to win. In any relationship, you have to make up in your mind that you got the best spouse in the world. Amen. Uh, you've seen the Lord third uh, talking about seed, uh, sowing into what, what's going on. Go ahead and tie yourself into this by sowing a seed into it, not just hey, just just yes. grab it. Go ahead and sow a seed. Sow so look, a seed Pastor, Pastor Ron or Pastor, Pastor Bernard, look, we want to sow this thing because we want that same anointing that's on y'all marriage to come on our marriage. Amen. All right. So I don't want you to miss that opportunity. Amen. But you know what? At the end of the day, if you decide that you don't want to sow a seed, we're still going to be here. Amen. And God's still going to be blessing Amen. us. Amen. All right. So Amen. don't forget about Glow. It's coming up pretty soon. Yes. I'm excited, ladies. We're going to have an awesome time. The Lord has always have great things to share. Um, we're going to have an awesome time. Uh, share it with a few friends. Invite a few friends to join online. Um, we, it will be via Zoom, but we will allow Facebook and YouTube to peep in. But we're going to have an amazing time, and I'm looking forward. Amen? Amen. Amen. On August 27th and 28th, Apostle oh, yes. Thompson will be conducting a supernatural money to coming you. to you conference. conference. It's virtually the sponsored church is Plain Plainville, Texas. Amen. Uh, but so make certain that you avail yourself to that. Is going to be uh, the 27th. That's a Thursday. That's a 7 p.m. service. And then on Friday, it's going to be a 10:30 service. Amen. And then they'll close out Friday night Amen. on 7. So Amen. make sure that you avail yourself to that. Make sure you register. Yes, register Amen. to go ahead and do that. And uh, on the 29th, of course, is Zoom. Amen. Second Amen. Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Life Construction Church, building the kingdom of God, one, one life, life at, at a time. time. to Life Construction Church. I'm Pastor Bernard Jackson. And I'm Rhonda Jackson. Life Construction Church, our vision is to lead people into a relationship with Jesus Christ by equipping them with the knowledge and understanding of God's Word. We believe our assignment is to construct lives for the kingdom of God, where there's nothing broken, nothing missing, living an abundant life, a life where there's agreeable surroundings, harmonious conditions, and the best of everything. We would like to invite you to our services Sunday, 10 a.m., Tuesday, 7 p.m. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Life Construction Church, building the kingdom of God, one, one life, life at, at a time. time. Life Construction, building.